Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. This over here is the Dream Creator PC. It's got every single part that Creator might want and it's got everything as good as we can get as well. Now, I have named this the ProArt PC because in the middle of this PC, we are using the ASUS X570 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard and it's got this golden and black theme and this is the whole theme of this PC. So in this video, we're gonna be building this PC, going through every single part and some of the specs and why we've chosen this and showing you how balls to the wall, all of the parts are in this build. Then in the end of the video, we're gonna be giving a little overview of the PC as well as doing some of the quick benchmarks that you might want to know. But hey, this is not all. This is part one of this PC build series. We have five parts and on the second part of this PC build, we're gonna be looking at the creative application benchmarks and how good is it in certain applications. If you're a video editor or photographer or so on, then you are gonna know how good this PC is in certain tasks. Then on the third part, we're gonna be looking at Premiere Pro live timeline playback performance of lots of different codecs. So if you're a video editor, this is definitely a video you wanna check out to really see how good this is and editing lots of different codecs all the way up to 12K footage. Then part four, we're gonna be doing the same thing but in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're a DaVinci Resolve video editor, then you're gonna be seeing that in there as well. And then on part five of this build series, we're gonna be looking at some of the alternatives. Let's say if you're asking, do you know what, I don't like this, the look of this part or maybe the performance of this part or you might wanna save some money on this PC build. Then on part five, we're gonna be going through all the parts and then I'm gonna give you some of the tips where you can either save money on the parts but also give you some of the tips what parts you shouldn't change and some parts that I would leave exactly as on this PC build because this is basically the best configuration. So hopefully after the series of this video, you know exactly whether this PC is for you. If you wanna build it, you can do it yourself. If you wanna configure it, you can do it yourself as well. Now let's rewind back time and actually build this PC. So you already know what the build looks like, but I'm here dead excited to start the build because it's just gonna be absolutely amazing. Obviously, we're gonna to have to start with the motherboard and this is the absolute bride and glory of this build. For the CPU, we're using the Ryzen 5950X, which is absolutely insane processor for creators. Like the best you can get, 16 cores, 32 threads. It's an absolute monster and perfect pair for this build over here. Next up, we're gonna need some screwdrivers and we're gonna be screwing off these M.2 covers over here. As you can see, this Asus motherboard features three M.2 slots and they're all PCIe 4.0 capable, which means that we can get insane speeds of these SSDs. And we're gonna be utilizing all of that because we've got some awesome drives over here. So for the OS drive, we are using the one terabyte Cadia C440, which is a PCA 4.0 drive, and this is our OS drive. And installing it is super easy because of these ASUS quick latch M.2 slots, so boom, our M.2 is installed. But we have two more options over here. And for that, we are gonna be using the absolute insane M.2 drives, which are these. The Seagate Firecuda 530 M.2 SSDs. And these have the most insane specs, like as good as it can get. The most impressive thing about this isn't that they're over seven gigabytes per second read and write speeds, but the actual terabytes written spec of these SSDs. Because every single day you can empty and fill up to 70% of the drive's capacity for the next five years and you're gonna be fine. So these are two terabytes in size. There's also four terabytes in size, so let's install these as well. Now, I know that these drives are actually marketed as gaming drives, but actually, to be honest, they should be marketed as creator drives because the creators can take absolute advantage of all of this high terabytes written spec because if you're a video editor, 3D modeler, photographer, 
often you are writing so much more data on your SSDs and deleting it than a gamer so that you can do a lot with these drives and not need to worry about this drive like breaking because it's insane. And the cherry on the top of the cake is the insane speeds of the drive. So let's put the heat sinks of these M.2 drives back but first we're gonna peel off this. So there's thermal pad underneath there which means that that's gonna keep our SSDs nice and cool. Now that's not all of our storage system, we also have a Kingston 2TB SATA SSD that's going to be our archive or second project drive or cache drive or something but that will be installed in the case so we're going to leave that for later. Next up it's time to install our RAM. So we'll open the second and the fourth slot over here and our RAM is going to be going there. Now we are going to be using 64GB of RAM but you can also upgrade this to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which just means that buying exactly the same kit that I have over here twice and then occupying the other slots that I have left empty. Now, this is the Kingston Fury Renegade RGB RAM. This is 3600 megahertz in speed and the CL18 which is a fantastic combination for this Ryzen system. And it's not too bad of a price and it's also black and gives us a little bit of an RGB accent if you want to have a little bit of that uh, emphasized in this build. It's a very high quality RAM, very good spec RAM, so highly recommend it. If you want to check them out, the link is in the description. Now it's time to talk about the cooling of this system. We have some Noctua fans over here as well that we were going to use, but we had some case shipping problems, so we're going to have to leave these for another project. What we are going to be using is this Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black. Noctua is absolute cooling genius, and this is one of their best coolers and it's completely black which matches our system. Now because this is a creator build you might be also wondering why are you using air cooling not AIO. The reason for that is reliability. Air cooling can just be run 24 7 without worrying about anything going wrong and our CPU is just gonna run the same speeds but with AIO there is the slight risk of you know something breaking in your pump or some liquids leaking but in our case you don't have to worry about that. We have just an absolute beast of a cooler to cool this down. Now inside the Noctua cooler package, we're gonna be using these gray spaces over here. Make sure you remove the original cooler mounting system from the motherboard. Let's apply some thermal pastes. It's also included inside the packaging. By the way, always good to have more thermal paste than less thermal paste. Now make sure that your Noctua sign here is not in the wrong way. Let's line up those screws and let's screw it down. And now putting these fans back in here. By the way, even if you don't have a screwdriver, Noctua includes a screwdriver for all of your work, so you don't actually need a screwdriver if you have this cooler because there's a screwdriver included. Now those two fan cables that came from there, there's this extension that comes from the cooler box. We're going to connect them to on this side. And then hide this cable somewhere underneath. And this cable is going to be connected to the CPU fan part, which is this grey header on the top over here. For the case, we're using the Fractal Torrent, which is the best air cooling case you can get in the world. And because our system is all gonna be air cooled and because it's workstation, that's why we're going with this case. Now, you might be wondering why is there some RGB fans over here? And it's because this case can come with RGB fans or without it. But because I requested the uh, RGB one, they had to send the RGB fans separately because the RGB version of this case is very, very popular. So we're gonna have to take the case out and change the RGB fans, well, the non-RGB fans inside the case to RGB ones. What's so different about this case is that first of all, you've got your power supply up on the top rather than on the bottom. And 
The two front intake fans are 180 millimeter in size. They're absolutely massive which means that they can work very slowly, meaning they create very little noise and we get a lot of airflow. And that's not just all airflow. We have also three 140 millimeter fans on the bottom, pulling the cold air from the bottom in and pushing it through. So it's absolutely awesome for airflow. It also comes with these uh, bars over here. And this is if you want to change the front fans to 140 millimeter ones, then it's going to change the front a little bit and make sure that the airflow works properly. So we don't need that, but we do need this accessories box. Okay, so the bottom fans are on this tray like that. So the case is prepared, we can put the motherboard in now, but we're gonna need to put on some more cables over here. I recommend you do it now because it's easier to do it now than to do it later. So we have some custom PSU extensions from CableMod, and this is absolutely awesome site, awesome product, what they're doing. So you can go and configure your own cables, make them look however you want. So these are like designed by me, and then they will ship them to you and you can get them like linked. For example, our GPU and uh, the CPU both have two cables coming from them. Oh, look at those cables. This is amazing. The first uh, cable that we have over here is the CPU power or EPS power. And we have eight plus four. And then our cable here is actually linked together. We have the four and eight pin both linked together. And we have these cable combs here as well to make it like later look really, really nice. Let's put these in. Then we have our 24 pin ATX power. And this is this massive cable over here. So let's move these combs a little bit over here. It takes quite a lot of pressure to put these in. So let's make sure none of these cables are in the way. And then we can take hold of the cooler and then just slowly lift the motherboard in. And time to screw it in. It won't stop me, watch me rise. No more anchors holding me down. All I need is now let's do a little bit of cable management here. It's time to also mount our SATA SSD from Kingston. This is the one terabyte, in fact, it's 1.92 terabyte version of the SSD. And we have a special golden SATA cable, SATA data cable to actually uh, complement that. Look at this beautiful SATA cable. Oh, golden matches everything. So let's, uh, you know, mount this over here as well. Okay, uh, I think my wife is giving birth, so it's best we leave it a little pause over here, deliver the baby, and then uh, continue wherever we left off. Okay, see you soon. <laughs> I'm also a father to a little girl now, not just boys. So uh, don't judge the Red Bull over here. Keep it quiet when you're smashing the like button because they're sleeping downstairs. And now for the PSU, we are using something from Fractal Design. It's the Fractal Design Iron Plus 2 Platinum Power Supply. This is 860 watt power supply, which is plenty enough to power all of our stuff. And then take out all the necessary cables from the pouch that comes with the power supply. So if you're wondering why we're using this uh, exact model of the power supply, it's because it is 80 plus platinum rated for power efficiency, 
which is very, very good. Also, it's small and it's not very expensive. So you're getting quite a lot of specs for your money. Plus it's got 10 year warranty. If you want a good power supply, make sure that they have got a long warranty, which this one over here has. So our power supply goes on the top of the case, but we want to make sure that our fan is mounted downwards because we're going to suck in the air from the case and then pushing it out from the back. We can just lay it down like that, which is quite an easy installation. So let's continue with our cable management, which basically means just plugging in all of those power cables to our colorful cables over here. If you're unsure which cable goes where, just consult the manual of the motherboard and then you can easily find which cables plug in where. Also, we want to install another exhaust fan on the back over here. Also, the cool thing is that the case actually comes with a GPU uh, sack bracket. So we're going to be mounting this as well. It goes on the bottom over there. And then on the other side, we have thumb screws. We're going to screw in it in on the back of this over here. For our graphics card, we are using the ASUS TUF RTX 3090. Absolutely, you know, balls the wall card as well. And it's going to be slotting on the top slot over here. We're going to open the slot. And before we can slot it in, we're going to have to remove the second and third slot cover on the back of the case over here. You just have to line this slot up on the bottom over there. Pretty straightforward. Make sure it just goes in the slot. And that's pretty much it. Let's screw our graphics card in as well. And while we are actually vertically over here, let's put the GPU sack bracket on over here as well. So this is nicely, we're gonna slot it over there. Let's move this rubber knob a little bit, something like that. And then let's screw it in over here. We also have these graphics card power extension cables as well, beautiful gold cables like all the other ones. So let's plug these in as well. And let's push our power cables through the other side, through that port over there. Hi. Before we're gonna hit the power button, just do one last double check that everything has been plugged in and everything works. I think it's time we hit the power button. Let's see what happens. So now I can see that our VGA and boot LEDs are on on the motherboard, which means that we have actually got a post. So everything is working properly. It just doesn't have a video output that it can put the posts out or show us the signal. That's why those lights are on on the motherboard. Now what we do is install Windows, configure all the software, uh, you know, do the fan curves and all the rest of the things, initialize the SSDs. If you don't know how to do all that part, I've got a completely other full length setup video for that. So, you know, check it out up there, but we're gonna come back in a moment and uh, then you're gonna see much nicer colors over here as well as much quieter PC. Okay, so welcome back. Now the windows and everything has been installed. All the programs have been optimized. Everything is spick and span. It's working. Everything is, you know, up to date at everything. And even the RGB is configured. I know you saw that a little bit on the intro already, but now it's, it's all done. So what are some of my first impressions of this PC build? And to be honest, I'm really, really liking it. I'm super impressed by the airflow and the cooling performance of this case and this configuration because it's just amazing. The PC runs really cool. The components are really cool inside as well because they get cooled very well. And uh, I just really like even the design. Now at first when all the lights were going rainbow vom, I didn't know if I was gonna like it, but actually configuring the lighting into like almost orangey yellow, just like a golden feel to match our custom sleeved PSU extension cables over here. They look absolutely fantastic and go so well with the motherboard and all of this theme. Another thing I wasn't so sure at first was like, oh, we're gonna put in like RGB RAM sticks underneath this massive heatsink of a CPU cooler. Are we really gonna see it? But actually, 
I really like it. And if you're gonna go with four sticks, I recommend you do that as well to get four sticks of these RGB RAM sticks over there because it just looks really, really cool. As you can see over here on this angle, you can see like a little strip of gold like a light over there and then you've got the similar light over here so that really complements ow don't touch the fans it really complements that part of um, this over here and I, I just really like it i think the design it just works really really cool and the front over here as well it looks really really cool with these fans in the front over there design the only thing for me that was a little bit more difficult than a usual pc builds and if you are a pc builder and you know you've built a few pcs before and you know this but because the psu is on the top instead of the bottom the gable management is like all upside down and kind of goes differently and the usual places where you would like route the cables you just have to think of a new way but if you're doing it for the first time then this has no problem for you you just find out you know where the cables go and all of that let me know what you think of this pc design and build in the description below also if this hasn't been clear to you all the parts we used in this PC, you can find in the description below if you want to purchase or get any of them yourself. Now let's have a look at some of the benchmarks here then. So first of all, let's do a Cinebench single core and multi-core test. Now this is super, super impressive. I know I haven't got the side panel on, but actually before this video, I did the test myself as well. But as you can see, we're 100% utilized of the CPU over here. Everything is 100% all the cores and look at that. We're pulling about 130 watt from the socket and our CPU temps are 56 degrees Celsius. That's insane. And as you can see, we got even better score than what I did before this video, uh, 25,482. So the cooling performance is super impressive on this. Now let's have a look at the single core. Just an interesting observation over here. As you can see, the single core here is boosting over five gigahertz. So let's have a look when it jumps to another core. Can you see that? This one here, 5.02 gigahertz, 5.049 gigahertz, which is absolutely amazing because the maximum rated from on the retail packaging of this CPU is actually 4.9 gigahertz. So it boosts higher than it actually shows on the packet. The single score is almost done. If you're wondering what am I doing right here, I just saw that Gerald Undone uh, released a video where he did exactly the same build with this motherboard. And my video should have been already published, but because, you know, you saw what happened in the middle of the video. Had to have a baby. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer time, but hey. But I think ours is better and looks better. So, uh, hey. You know, it's commonly known knowledge that RGB adds more performance. Don't you know that? So single core score is done. 1641 that's very 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 high next off let's go to geekbench 5 and we're doing the cpu benchmark let's have keep an eye on the wattage and the temperature and then let's see how well does it cool down this system over here geekbench scores are in our single core score is 1750 and our multi-core score is 16316 now since it is a 3090 let's do a cuda benchmark over here for the 3090 run that benchmark and then let's see how it goes let's keep an eye on our gpu temperatures as well and let's see what happens cuda score in 242256 that's uh that's pretty insane. This is Blackmagic Raw speed test. So let's just press play and then see how well does that one work. Okay, it looks that our CPU can play back 55 frames per second of 8K B Raw and our GPU 97. So this is our Cardia C440. And then we can see that our write speed over here is 3.8 gigabytes per second and read speed, or 3.9 now and then read speeds whoa 4000 megabytes per second 3.8 3.9 gigabytes per second and then read speed okay i got a write speed of four gigabytes per second and then read speed as well four gigabytes per second which is pretty interesting now let's see the fire cuda 530 5.4 gigabytes per second and 5.1 gigabytes per second. That is a uh, very, very impressive. Let's try the other FireQ to 530 drive. Now the write speed is 5.9 gigabytes per second and read speed 5.2 gigabytes per second. I think we can reach almost 6,000 here as well. 
5.5 gigabytes per second. That is insane. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any other questions, I'm going to meet you in the comment section below. Likes if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in part two. See you soon. Bye-bye.